What's up guys, Justin here with the SketchUpEssentials.com back with another SketchUp layout tutorial for you. So in this video I wanted to talk about five of the most important tips that I've found so far for working in layout. Um, before I get started I do want to take a second to thank my newest supporter on Patreon, William Fowler. Um, Patreon, as you know, is the website where you can support creators that you like on YouTube. So if you like what I'm doing in this channel, you're finding what I'm doing helpful, please make sure to check out that link and think about supporting in the notes down below. Now let's go ahead and just jump into it. So if you're looking for more information or resources for layout, make sure you check out the sketchupessentials.com slash layout. And that's a page I'm trying to build out to kind of make as a hub for all of my layout resources so um, that they're easy to find and people can just kind of go there and get help and um, all of that. I found that there's not a lot of places that have a bunch of that information online, so I'm trying to kind of put that all together. Also, leave a comment below. Let me know what kind of resources you'd like to see on that page that would be helpful for you. So tip one is turning off perspective. And so a lot of the time what you want to do when you're in layout is you're trying to generate architectural plans. And one of the things that can be a little bit difficult when you first start out is figuring out exactly how to generate that look. Because if you've got your, uh, if you've got your 3D model, a lot of the time what you want is you want a top-down view, but if you select SketchUp's top-down view, you can see how the walls kind of go to a vanishing point, um, so they're not straight up and down, and so this isn't really an appropriate looking architectural plan. And so what you want to do in order to change that is you want to go up to your camera, and you want to select the option for parallel projection. So that way, when you select the option for parallel projection, that turns off perspective, so your stuff is no longer going to a vanishing point. Um, everything, all of your uh, visibility lines or all of your perspective lines now run parallel to each other rather than to a vanishing point. And so if you're working in 3D, you generally want to do it with the uh, perspective turned on, but if you're trying to do something like this or if you're trying to create like an elevation view, then you want to go ahead and turn that off. So that's camera, parallel, projection. And then you can save that as a part of your scenes. Tip two is understanding the difference between raster, vector, and hybrid rendering. So layout is a little bit different from SketchUp in the sense that it renders your lines a little bit different. So what that means is that it's capable of generating much smoother, better looking lines that you can adjust, but there's a few settings you need to understand. So these settings are found in your SketchUp model dropdown in your tray on the lower right hand side. And when you look at this drop down, this gives you three options. It gives you an option for vector, raster, and hybrid. So vector is a rendering style that's good at line drawings. So it's really good at rendering your lines and making them smooth, but it can't represent the complex styles in your model. So like for example, if you look, I have this in here showing the materials from my SketchUp model, but they're not rendered in the vector rendering style. However, if I was to select the option for raster, you can see how my textures will show up in my model, but my line weights get really kind of choppy. So you can see, especially on these curves, that these lines are no longer smooth curves. So you can use this if you don't need your lines to be super smooth, or if you want to preview what things are going to look like with materials in your layout model. And then the third option is hybrid. Hybrid allows you to represent both your complex styles as well as showing your line weights. So if I click OK, these line weights are going to smooth out and I can also show my materials in my SketchUp model. However, this comes with the trade-off of performance. So if you're working in layout, you probably don't want hybrid turned on, probably until you're going to go ahead and export your images. So understanding the difference between those three could really save you a lot of time in waiting around for things to render and that sort of thing. Tip three is using the preserve scale on resize option. So one of the things that can be a little bit frustrating to new users of layout is trying to resize and place drawings in your models, especially when you're trying to move them around, layer them on top of each other. So the reason for this is often when you bring a new image into layout from your model, those images lose their scale if you try to resize them. That's because of an option called preserve scale on resize. And so what you want when you're doing this is you want to be able to resize your viewport in your model without your model resizing. Because often you'll bring in a scene based on a scene that's in your model and you'll set your scale and your SketchUp model options. However, if this box is unchecked, 
you can see how now if I click and drag and move this around, it changes the scale of my model. So you can see how as I click and drag, this scale is changing. However, if you set your scale, and then you check the box for preserve scale on resize, then you can resize your viewport without actually trying to resize your model itself. So you can see how as long as this box is checked and you have your view selected, your scale will stay the same. Tip four, layering views by unchecking the background box. So most of you know that the way that you create views in layout is by stacking different layers or visibilities from your model in order to do different line weights different styles, and other things. However, sometimes if your settings aren't correct, you'll try to layer a view on top of another view and it'll actually block what's behind it. You can adjust the setting of the styles tab of the SketchUp model section of your tray. For example, in this view, I've stacked several different layers in order to generate a solid shaded exterior wall, a different shaded interior wall, and also show my furniture. However, if I was to bring my furniture view in on top and the box for background in the style section of your SketchUp model is checked, you can see how this will hide all of the layers behind it. So when you bring in a layer to stack on top of another layer, make sure the box for background is unchecked so that you can let the layers behind it show through. Tip five, organize your model properly. This is easily the most important tip for working in layout. You need to make sure that as you're modeling, you're grouping and layering everything properly so that you can turn everything on and off. There's a fair amount of planning involved, but you need to make sure that you've got an idea of what you want to create. For example, I always put my exterior walls on a different layer than my interior walls. And I also group them using the outliner. What I do is I use groups within the outliner as containers, and then I put those on various layers using the entity info. So for example, I could select interior walls and I can put those on the interior walls layer. Then I can turn those on and off in order to create the different layers that I need within my layout model to generate the plans that I want. Having a plan and a system for the way that you organize your models when you're modeling for layout is very important. I'll link to a video above about organizing your model for layout. If you do this starting from the beginning, and group everything and put everything on the proper layer from when you start, this can be a very painless process. I'll also recommend the SketchUp Workflow for Architecture book by Michael Brightman. He has a great system for organizing your different views in your model so that they're ready to go to layout. Um, you can check that out at the sketchupessentials.com slash layout. That's where I'm gonna end today's video. Leave a comment below, let me know what you thought. Did I leave any tips out? Do you have any great tips for uh, working with layout that make your life a lot easier? I'd love to hear about them in the comments down below. If you like this video, please remember to click that like button down below. If you're new around here, remember to click that subscribe button for new SketchUp content every week. If you like what I'm doing on this channel, please consider supporting me on Patreon. Every little bit helps, even if it's only a dollar a month. But in any case, thank you so much for taking the time to watch this. I really appreciate it, and I will catch you in the next video. Thanks, guys.